Hey everyone, it's Alex and welcome to the Marvel Snap Decks of the Week. You might notice we're using a different camera for those that did not hear the news. RIP, my original expensive high quality camera. It is donezo. It doesn't even turn on anymore, which is big sag. But you know what? It is what it is. We're going to run with our backup webcam here for the time being. And uh, I am making plans to replace my camera in the future. But hey, I got to do a little bit of research first so this doesn't happen again. In the meantime, we got our webcam. But that doesn't matter. You don't care about what I look like. You care about the decks. Let's talk about the decks. So right off the top here, we are going by untapped based win rate statistics. These are top 50% infinite statistics based on the most recent patch. It's also worth noting that there is going to be one deck where I'm di diving a little deeper into the stats with a higher sample size. I'll explain when we get there. And I'm also inverting two of the placements. And I'll explain when we get there as well. So a little bit more of like Alex's intervention in this top 10 list based on my personal feel, um, based on the meta that I've been experiencing. But Agent Bounce, definitely a top 10 uh, deck. It has been very consistently part of the top 10 meta ever since Agent uh, Venom has been released. It's never been a top performer, but it's been in that like 11, 10, 9 range. It's been above 0 0.30 cube rate for basically all of the videos that we've been talking about it. Still running a 56% win rate, which is pretty solid. And again, it's hitting just cards that want to get hit. It's hitting the Iron Man. It's hitting the Bishops, the Sages. With Sage, a great closer, of course. But it's also worth noting here is you have that ability to falcon and then activate the black swan black swan actually making a top 10 deck and uh it's been legit the deck's legit it works and so if you're looking to play something with a little more nuance and uh, you want to try some black swan because you're like hey i haven't played that card in a long time this is one to go with and then at number nine we've got zoo at a 0 0.30 cube rate and a 57 percent win rate it continues to be a very strong performer in the meta what took it a little bit off of the meta this past week is that some people are getting agony. We're testing it in Destroy. So when you're doing that, you're playing Destroy, which definitely hard counters the zoo. Yes, of course, you're running Kyra here, but sometimes you don't draw Kyra. And like obviously, you can play the Killmonger early, wipe things out if you have initiative. And so the early kind of game plan of zoo falls apart. But regardless, the deck still plays very, very good. 57% win rate, you can't argue that. Very straightforward play pattern. Very effective both wide and vertical with the power of Gilgamesh, which we talked about on the Snapchat. So honestly, the deck is still good. I'm running out of things to say about it. You can still play it. It's even dodged a couple nerfs. It did get nerfed with Marvel Boy, but I'm still surprised that Gilgamesh is putting out the power it is, and Mockingbird has been touched up so many times, but still very relevant. The addition to Silver Sable is notable here. Silver Sable does increase its win rate, but ultimately, it's still Zoo. So if you don't have all the cards, I'm sure you have a couple of modifications you can make within your collection. That takes us to number eight, and it was last week's number one, Agent Darkhawk. Now, the sample size for this deck got massive after last week's video, and the win rate kind of came down. Still at a 57% win rate and a 0.31 cube rate. Still great stats, but we have some higher performers this week. Um, and uh, that's not a bad thing. You can still climb with this. You can still get to infinite with this. You can do very much anything with this deck in Marvel Snap. This is still my go-to fun deck that I'm playing right now. High voltage, I'm playing my Gambit Pew Pew stuff, but Agent Darkhawk, still solid everywhere else. So I still like this deck a lot. It is an absolute hate deck though for your opponent. And people are gonna like Miss Marvel thumbs up you for sure. Cause you can like Black Widow and then Grandmaster or you can just Black Widow, Absorbing Man and then Grandmaster one of them. And like you can literally hit them with three Widow's Bites. You can hit them with three sets of Rock Slides. You can just keep doing all these massive combos because of both Grandmaster and Absorbing Man. Grandmaster feels great in these decks because of the 2-3 power. It used to be a 2-0, bear in mind. And so, like, this deck really does perform very well. I like it a lot. And um, this has been my favorite of the last week, despite the slide in the statistics. We go to Erisham at number 7. I know it's cringe, but 58% win rate. You can't argue the stats. 0.33% cube rate. Or not percentage, whatever. I'm tired. I'm still sick. But anyways, Erisham doing well. Uh, the play rate's way down. You're really not seeing as much Erisham as you used to. Uh, that's for sure. Erisham was like 70% of the meta. It's still out there. It's still doing work. It's still winning games. It's still annoying for the most part. But honestly, it's not actually as prevalent as it once was. We are seeing it quite a bit in the um, the high voltage mode. Just to finish off some of those like spend X amount of energy quests, right? So people are just using Erisham to kind of pun punch through those quests. But ultimately, Erisham, still good. Still an option. And honestly, if you want to play some Erisham... People aren't, like, teching towards it as much. Uh, the Agent Darkhawk deck works well against it because it has the uh, Cassandra Nova. But even if you're not, like, the nice thing about that deck is even if you're not playing, like, Air against Erisham, you're using the Korgs and the Rock Sides and stuff, and obviously the White Widows, to keep their decks stuffed, 
which allows the Cassandra Nova to generate value, right? So Arisham still gets wrecked by those decks, but regardless, Loki is a good counterplay against the Dark Hawks and stuff like that because it does reduce your deck size. And of course, you got your Blob, which does that as well. So you still do very well against Dark Hawk. It's the Cassandra Novas that seem to punish you quite often. Now, here's where we get a little weird. We're going to have two discard decks back to back. And that's because we have almost no data on Scorn. And that's kind of weird. So right off the top, this is a high performing, high data set discard deck. So if you want to play discard, this is a 59% win rate deck at 0.36 cube rates. Very good. It's doing the Moon Knight stuff. It's doing the Gambit stuff. Gambit's being splashed into all these decks now. It's like all of a sudden people are like, whoa, Gambit's fun. Let's play Gambit. Like this deck never used to use Gambit and now it is. It's also using Gwenpool too, which I think is a very inventive uh, use of like trying to pump your swarms and generate some value there. Obviously Dokken likes to get hit by the Gwenpool as well. Pretty much everything likes to get hit with Gwenpool, so pretty nice splash here. But So this one here it does have a pretty large sample size with regards to discard. It's doing well. Now, here's the thing, though, and I found this fascinating. We had a higher win rate version of discard, but it had a smaller sample size. And so I wanted to kind of asterisk it to say, like, hey, this is a far fewer sample size. And I even cross-referenced it to another reference site to make sure that, like, hey, is Scorn doing pretty good here? Scorn's not seeing a lot of play right now. And that might be because people are going after, you know, Agony with the high voltage mode, which has been a hit, or because people just are kind of like low on scoring and don't want to risk their keys. That's entirely possible. We'll talk about it on the Snapchat. But it's running a 60% win rate and a 0 0.50 cube rate. It's good, man. It's doing really good. It's just not seeing the play rate. And so, just like what we saw with the Agent Venom deck, once there's more games and more volume, we get some uh, a better, like, picture of what a deck's actual performance is and so this could deviate quite significantly from the 60 percent and the 0 0.50 cube rate but i want to show it to you i personally am a believer in scorn i really like scorn and um I, I like this deck a lot like my personal deck wasn't running something like a moon knight but i totally understand why you would want to run moon knight you got the disruption of the moon knight you got the gambit disruption as well it's just a fun deck honestly it, it's a good deck um and uh, it does not surprise me that this is a high-performing shell. But I wanted to give you that caveat of like, hey, lower uh, data here. But I know uh, Scorn's the card of the week here. Discard is popular. People like playing Discard. I love playing Discard. And so I wanted to feature it because it is performing very well. But I wanted to give you a bit of a caveat that we do not have that much of a sample size with it. So the statistics may vary. Big guys, War Machine. I mean, this is a new one that's making its way onto the scene and uh, it has fantastic stats. 59% win rate, an astonishing 0.61 Q rate. That is nuts. And it's running Zabu, Nebula, Ebony Ma, Madam Web. This is by far the best performing Madam Web deck out there right now. And it's using the War Machine to play things like Call Obsidian and Crossbones wherever you want. It's surprising to me that Scar doesn't make this deck. I was like, man, I would kind of put Scar in, but I didn't cook it. I just found it. And this is what's running. And it's doing great as of right now. And I mean, you do have your Storm, War Machine, Legion, Infinite package that you can also follow that up with the Doctor Doom if it's more appropriate. You got a lot of ways to win here. You got a lot of early lines as well. I do like the Zabu play into like the early War Machine or the early Crossbones or Call Obsidian. That's pretty cool. Keep in mind, Zabu, Call Obsidian, synergistic, pretty cool. Never used to be that way. So, yeah, I like this deck a lot. It's a new kind of emerging deck on the scene. So if you want to try something brand new that's really cool, I would go with this one. I really like this cook a lot, and it's performing very well. Let's go to number three, and we've got ourselves Toxic Ajax. It's kind of funny. Ajax was a card that I think, you know, a lot of people were kind of like ho-hum on, and it has continued to be, like, in, like, the top echelons of the decks for a while. And it has been a very consistent high performer. And I find it interesting that these decks are now including Luke Cage to like, okay, yes, Ajax was getting to like 25 points, okay? But you didn't need Ajax to 25 points. Just mangling their board was often enough. And you taking the Gilgamesh style power of Ajax was usually enough. And so the Luke Cage in conjunction with like the man thing and the US agent and stuff was just good. I like the Shadow King as well. I find it fascinating. Just gotta be careful with how you play Shadow King. You don't want to play, you can play Shadow King with like US Agent or Man Thing or whatever. You don't want to play uh, Shadow King on top of the Scorpion or Hazmat targets, right? You want to try to like, like, you know, not do that. It's also worth noting here that this is a Quicksilver Wiccan deck. It might be quick to forget that those two cards exist, but I can't believe I'm looking at a Quicksilver deck with a 60% win rate. And it, you are reading it correct. Fantastic. And Copycat makes this deck as well. I'm personally still hurt by Copycat's change, but I digress. I know it's a good card. 
listen, I get it. I get it. I, I tried this deck. I was like, okay, yeah, copycat's good. I, I get it. I need to I need to move off my opinion. I got to let go of the past and move forward with the future. As we go to deck number two. Now, deck number two actually has the highest win rate in Marvel Snap this week. But I'm like, you know what? I don't personally like this deck. I don't like, I, I was like in this moment where I was like, you know what? Okay, on tap. You're saying this is the top deck. You're saying this is the 62% 0.48, uh, you know, cube rate deck. This is the one. I'm like, yeah, I, I don't believe it. So I did some additional testing. I still don't believe it. Hey, listen, the stats shouldn't be lying. They don't lie. The deck is good. I personally don't like Cannonball in it. I don't like Mag uh, Magneto in it. I don't like the scream change with the Juggernaut. This deck is good. It's performing well. But if you don't draw a scream, it all feels like it falls apart. Because you're not cannonballing anything to destroy it, and, and like you don't have a clog element here. Magneto's just moving guys around. Arrow is just moving guys around. And so, like, yeah, you got the Craven for the pop-off. You got some, you got the Kingpin as well. But Scream is really that linchpin card. And so, like, you're often like, well, I didn't draw a Scream. Everything feels bad. I use Polaris, things move. I don't even have Kingpin out. And it kind of falls apart. Now, I do like the fact that this deck and my playtesting did feature. Kingpin, Craven, and Screams. So you have like three targets. But remember, only Polaris is targetable for the most part in your early game. Juggernaut's not targetable, like to where you want to send them. Spider Man's random, so you don't know if you're going to hit Craven or if you're going to hit Kingpin. Scream doesn't care, hits whatever. It's by far the most important card to get on the field to play. So my experience with this was like a little ho hum. So I personally was hesitant to give it the number one spot based on my testing. So hey, take that with a grain of salt. But this was statistically the number one deck. But I got one that I like better that I can't wait to show you guys. And let's move to it right now. And as we move to it, a reminder that if you've not hit that subscribe button, we are almost legit. I know I've been saying it for like two months. We're almost legit 100,000 subscribers. We just might make it before New Year's. That would be a legit dream come true to make it in 2024. It is Agent Venom. It has a lower win rate at 59%, which I forgot the percent symbol. But it has a... 70 cube rate that is crazy it is the cube rate is astonishing and when i play this deck i'm like damn age of venom is cracked this deck is good it's just wild and what really surprises me is that these decks at first when i was testing them with agent venom they often played mysterio and i liked mysterio in them mysterio with bass mysterio with venom those are great mysterio's cut here you got speed here instead now if you don't have speed just add mysterio in honestly still a great deck but like i really like how this deck plays you have the change to White Widow. Who makes a comeback? Jeff. You got the Cosmo. You're seeing like a lot of like combination. Well, you're seeing some Wong by accident because people are like queuing their Wong high voltage decks into right by accident. But no, Wong's Wong, not Wong, sorry. Cosmo's still good. Speed, incredible power. We talked about it on the Snapchat. So good. You have the Mystique, Iron Man, winnable all by itself. Literally everything here loves getting hit by Agent Venom. And then of course you got the Thena Kitty Pride. What else do you want? This deck absolutely slaps. It's my favorite of the week and the one I think you should be taking to infinite if you're still making your trek there. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I truly appreciate all your support. As I said before, consider hitting that subscribe button if you do find my content valuable. And hey, while you're there, hit the like button too. I forgot to mention that. We'll see you on that next one.